What is going on? Welcome to the Way Up Network. It is your girl Ashley, as it always is. And this is another episode of Way Up Weekly Vibes, where we gather around once a week, talk about the energy that is ahead so that we can make the most out of it. I knew this shit was going to happen. I'm not going to lie. Nobody will let me <laughs> do anything around here. So... <laughs> This is how my life has been Adaptability, flexible, be a tree And I'm just like, I've had enough, okay? I'm sure we all have, which is why I do have some good news for you. This week, Jupiter uh, is going retrograde in Gemini. And normally people look at a Jupiter retrograde as like, oh God, my abundance is going to stop. Oh God, there's going to be so much like challenges with a Jupiter retrograde. But because Jupiter is already challenged in Gemini, <laughs> the retrograde grade is going to be uh, fantastic for not only our minds, but our life, wherever we've been experiencing, uh, you know, blocks, uh, really hot. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Anyways, welcome to you guys. Um, we do have a little bit of a short week because the energy that is kind of carrying us into this week is, is, still very much the eclipse energy. Um, and then the three major aspects that we do have uh, are coming in to help us close out uh, the eclipse season this year. So essentially, we're coming into a week of eclipse aftermath. And it's pretty much going to feel like that the whole way through October. That's kind of what we're geared up for. November is more of like the truer, newer beginning kind of energy, uh, energies that we've been looking forward to. And we should finish out the end of the year nicely in terms of energy energy. There's a few little hiccups here and there, uh, but nothing can be perfect, right? Duality, polarity, all the things. Um, so we're just going to talk about it, all right? Uh, real quick, if you're here, um, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, drop some comments below, share the good word with your people. Uh, it really does help. If you hear me like blowing my nose low key, I'm gonna try to mute the mic, but these fall allergies are a bitch. I'm also hella tired. I'm recording this on October 4th, uh, just a day. Well, we're still in uh, new moon energy. The moon is going to move into the waxing phase uh, this evening. Um, so we're still in that new moon energy and I'm still tired is book. I'm sure you guys are too. Um, oop, I don't know what just happened. Uh, I'm sure you guys are too, but we're going to go ahead and get into it. So first thing I want to talk about, we're going to talk about three aspects today. Uh, um, October 9th, Jupiter is going retrograde in Gemini. October 11th, Pluto is going direct in Capricorn, Capricorn for the last time in our lifetime. This is really 1111 11, solidifying uh, the final stage of this uh, Pluto Capricorn um, uh, integration or I should say the Pluto Aquarius integration, uh, but Pluto is getting ready to leave Capricorn in about a month. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that. And then October 13th, we have Mercury uh, entering Scorpio. And the theme of this week is all about evaluation, reflection, uh, pondering, all of those energies, integrating lessons, ref not necessarily integrating lessons as much as it is like focusing on them. But if you've been struggling, I'm not focusing on them, reflecting on them, pondering on them, uh, just kind of sitting with the aftermath of things. Uh, but if you have been struggling with integrating any lessons, then of course, this is going to be a great time to do that. Uh, but we're going to talk about it. So first, Jupiter going retrograde in Gemini. The energies that I channeled for this are around relaxing your mind, reflecting on your life, pondering on the present moment from a new perspective, and then integrating a, a integrating the lessons around adaptability. So with Jupiter being in Gemini, that's that energy has really been challenging us the last six months to, one second. I told you, bro, nobody is going to let me like 
do things today. <laughs> this is how it's been. It's almost like the universe is like, don't do anything. And I'm like, I at least have to do like these couple little things. Like you can't just, you can't just turn the faucet completely off, but then you resist and then you bring yourself out and then it's like a whole thing. So that's where I am, which is why I've been like low key. But speaking to Jupiter, retrograde in Gemini, relax your mind, reflect on life, ponder the present from a new perspective, and then integrate the lessons around adaptability. So Jupiter and Gemini has really come to 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 challenge us truly to challenge us in order for us to grow in order for us to make sure that we're in alignment with the things that we want out of life when Jupiter is in Gemini well first of all Jupiter is an is an expander uh it's an expansive planet so anything it's almost like anything the light touches is our kingdom right so anything Ju Jupiter touches it expands Gemini is a very social energy. It's a very uh, mental. It looks like we got disconnected. Gemini, Gemini is a very social energy. It's a very mental energy. Uh, it is a, it's very much um, an entrepreneurial type of energy. So um, trying a lot of things as opposed to like committing to the one thing. Um, the shadow side is really being up in your head, uh, which is what a lot of us have been dealing with. And then uh, it's been bringing Jupiter and Gemini in general has been bringing a lot of blocks to the things that um, we've been trying to create because we've created a lot of resistance uh, to stepping out of our comfort zone and trying anything new. If you have been trying to push forward with the same old, same old during this time in any capacity, you could have felt very restricted, whether that be the same mindset, the same belief system, the same job, uh, the same relationship, whatever you've been trying to do that has been the same, right? So the last era that we've been in, it's not going to work when Jupiter is in Gemini. So it can create a lot of blocks and restrictions if you're resisting the new, if you're resisting trying new things, if you're resisting meeting new people, if you're resisting putting yourself out there in new and different ways uh, or, or exploring new options. If you've been resisting any of those things, then Jupiter and Gemini, the last six months has been a challenge for you. Uh, you've been blocked. You've been frustrated. You've been stuck. You've been punching air. Well, the good news is, is that through all of that rigorous resisting or rigorous training, right? Maybe your life has been good. You have been embracing the new. You have been, um, you know, trying new things, putting yourself out there in new ways, stepping outside of your comfort zone, getting out into your community, being social, like just being truly open hearted, open minded to new energy. Um, then this retrograde is just going to be a break for you. But for for those of you guys where you have been, uh, you know, sort of struggling and stressed out, this is a chance for your mind to relax and for you to gain clarity um, on the lessons that Jupiter and Gemini has been trying to bring you so that you can get a little bit more comfortable with uh, the new, trying new things, looking at life from a different perspective, seeing how your old uh, ways of being self-limiting beliefs, negative self-talk, these kind of things have been restricting you. And then, of course, doing something about them. So relaxing your mind, reflecting on life, how things have been up until this point. Um, specifically, what's being highlighted is the last six months, of course, because of the eclipses. So from Aries season till now, where have you run into these blocks and restrictions? And where can you be more open to new experiences and new things, right? Um, and then, of course, pondering on the present from a new perspective. This is looking at those self-limiting beliefs and the way that you've been moving about life. Have you been... Um, have you been taking on a victim complex? Have you been taking on a martyr complex? Have you been adapting a five of pentacles energy as if the world is happening to you and not for you, right? If that's the case, it's time to change your perspective to one that's more positive, abundant. If you've been dealing with any sort of scarcity or lack or fears or distrust, uh, lack of faith, right? If you've been dealing with a lot of egoic energies, now is the time to address those. Um, and then, of course, integrating the lessons around adaptability. We have been being pushed and asked to be adaptable. And if we cannot do that, if we haven't been able to do that, that's when the challenges arise. Being adaptable, being flexible, uh, not setting so many expectations expectations on the plan, the plan, the plan, the plan, the plan, the 
uh, Virgo side of Mercury is more about the details and the plan. The Gemini side of Mercury energy, uh, which is the planet that that is uh, that uh, is ruled by Vir Virgo and Gemini, the mind, the mental, right? The Gemini side of Mercury, though, is less about the planning and more about having the idea and then going to do. So that's being flexible. What I had planned, Virgo energy, uh, is it might not go according to plan while Jupiter is in Gemini. But since Jupiter is a benefactor energy and wants me to essentially live my best life and have abundance and all these things, let me just follow the idea. Let me just follow the spark and let me just do that without any self-imposed restrictions or limitations or ego or attitude towards things not going my way. Let me just embrace the new. That's your key. A lot of resistance I feel around this Jupiter and Gemini, people putting their hands up and saying, no, 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 no. I don't want new. I don't want new. I don't want to, I don't want to put in the effort to go towards new while all the while wanting new low key. Do you see how conflicting that is? That's also Gemini energy. It's the shadow side of it, right? Two conflicting views, two conflicting energies. Um, I, technically that's like shadow side of air energy in general, Libra and Aquarius as well, but that's a different story. Um, the, the point is, is that how adaptable have you been? How trusting and faithful have you been? How proactive have you been on the ideas and the things that have been coming to you? Uh, if you have not been, this is a chance for the pressure to come off and for you to naturally uh, just gravitate and, and be that adaptable uh, person and just, okay, you know, let go, let God, Jesus, take the wheel, surrender, like to embody that energy so that you can be led and guided ultimately to what it is that you want. But what your ego and fear has been uh, talking you out of, right? So Gem Jupiter and Gem Jupiter retrograde and Gemini on October 9th is helping us with that. Then on the 11th, we have Pluto going direct in Capricorn and the channelings that came through were evaluate the lessons learned. So for the last since 2008, what lessons have you been going through? If you've been dealing with any sort of karmic situations, then what archetypes have you been dealing with? Uh, what type of, again, with the self-limiting beliefs, right? Um, what type of negativity have you been dealing with? What type of same person over and over again? Again, have you been dealing with it? You need to learn something about. I'm getting like a mirroring energy here. So uh, as within, so without. Um, what, how have you been? How have you been approaching life and situations? Um, who have you been? And even um and what has that caused good or bad right so what lessons have you learned uh finally evaluating them seeing them for what they are accepting them and kind of just letting them pass uh closing out cycles of grief so anytime something comes to an end there is a grief there is a mourning there is a bittersweet moment there is some heartbreak there is some pain a lot of what we've been working through this year has been the energy of grief from beginning to end spring till now it has felt like a funeral and so so this uh, Pluto going direct uh, for the 30 days that it will still be in the sign of Capricorn. It is a time to close out those grief cycles. No one is telling you if you're in the midst of the worst heartbreak ever to like just be done or be over with grief. What I am saying by this uh, is um, to make time to continue your grief process, things up in uh, and all the things while the energy is uh, here for it, right? While the vibes are here to help you with that. And then um, the last thing is to get excited to celebrate the end of an era. Capricorn, um, uh, Pluto movements only come around once in a lifetime, right? And depending on how long that cycle is, you might only get to see the switch of one once in a lifetime. Some people don't even get to see the switch of one once in a lifetime. Uh, but we are getting that opportunity. It's special. It's beautiful uh, to watch Pluto move from one sign to another because it only happens like every 200 years. <laughs> so if you weren't born like towards the end, then you only have ever experienced your lifetime was Pluto Capricorn, right? Uh, or so on or so forth, right? Um, but, um, well, I, I guess I meant to say you get to experience 
only Pluto moving into uh how do I say it? I I think I'm saying this like not right. I hope you guys know what I mean. Like we only get to experience Pluto Capricorn once. Like we are the era that gets to experience that, right? Because Pluto's not going to be in Capricorn for another 200 and something years, right? We're never going to see that again, <laughs> but we will see it go into Aquarius, which we did not get to see in the 1800, 1700s when it moved into Aquarius, right? So this is a beautiful experience that we get to have uh, over the next 16-ish years years. Really, I'm gonna say the next 20 because y'all know how that shit like to act. But anyways, this is the final time that Pluto is going to be in Capricorn. So we just need to celebrate. We need to celebrate the last 16 to 20 years of our lives, whether it was good, bad, hard, or ugly. Uh, but what we need to focus our attention on is we're putting those lessons behind us now, those really, really difficult Capricornian lessons, and we get to embrace totally new experiences, totally new eras, and we, we need to uh, truly be excited for what's to come because that's what's going to set the tone for what's to come. If you're negative, if you're dreadful, if you're miserly, then it's you, you're setting the tone for your experience, right? So uh, yeah, embrace this era, the ending of this era. Uh, finally, on October 13th, Mercury is going to enter Scorpio and, and this is like the death of it all, right? This is the this is an opportunity for uh, ego deaths to occur by way of seeking truth and embracing the hard truths that we are seeking. So in order to truly wrap up something, in order to truly forgive something, in order to truly uh, move on and move forward in a way that does at least at minimum feel comfortable and right, we need some sort of understanding, not necessarily of all the whys, the who's, the what's, the when's, even though that's very Scorpio, uh, very Mercury and Scorpio. It's very Scorpio energy in general, right? Um, but more of in the way of like seeing people and situations and what you've experienced through the lens of clarity. It's about uh, digging really deep uh, to the surface of yourself, of you your emotions of a person of a situation that you've been dealing with and just seeking the 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 uh oh, like how do i say um not everyone truly likes truth that is just what it is you would be so surprised how many people don't want to hear the reality uh, of themselves of their behavior of a situation of an experience of a relationship that they're dealing with of a job that you're dealing with they're dealing with you would be so fucking surprised how many people don't really want truth and even even when they say they do want truth and they do want to know the truth, when they get the truth, they can't fucking accept it. That's the killer, right? I have seen so many people say, tell me, tell me, I want to know, tell me the truth. And I'm like, you know, this is the truth. And they're like, I don't receive that. <laughs> Not verbally, but you can just tell when someone is like, I don't really give a fuck about that truth because I don't, I reject it. I don't want that to be my reality. I'm going to go over here and be delusional until I can't be delusional no more. And when it hurts too bad, when it hurts so bad to keep being delusional, then I will finally accept the truth. And we all go through this process because a lot of, like I said, a lot of the times we all holla, you know, we want truth, send me truth. Give me truth. Give me justice. Give me peace. Give me light. Right. Because the truth will set you free. A lot of the a lot of people will reject it. I have been one to reject truth before. You have been one to reject truth before. It's fucking hard sometimes to see the reality of situations. This is why escapism is such a huge issue uh, amongst humanity uh, and very heavily specifically in this country. Um, that's a different story for a different time. I actually went through this whole rabbit hole about escapism. That's going to be another video for another time, but, um, the truth will set you free. Scorpio, the investigator wants to set you free, wants to put the final pieces of the puzzle together for you so that you can get some sort of closure and allow the death process to complete, which it will through the ego death when the mind accepts the truth of what is, um, and really allows us to move forward. So Mercury and Scorpio is helping us with that as well as helping us to release any negativity that we're holding on to um, towards ourselves or towards others um, and allow us to offer up some forgiveness. Scorpio is a sign that shadowly uh, is known for holding grudges. 
I think all water signs are in some way. Um, but again, it's because of the deeper feelings at, at play here. But um, we don't want to be shadow side Scorpio. We want to be death side Scorpio where we do forgive and we don't hold grudges and we're, you know, we don't have negativity and hate for ourselves and we don't hold negativity and hate for others. Um, we don't let our fears get the best of us. Instead, we challenge them. So releasing negativity, challenging fears, um, allowing the ego death to take hap to take place in your life where there needs to be one, whether it's, you know, you're afraid, so ego, or you just resist truth, ego, um, you know, those kind of energies, um, and allowing, you know, the final pieces of the puzzle to come together. We've been um, talking about the puzzle pieces. Well, this is where we now get to uh, see the whole thing fully, truly, and completely if we're willing to accept whatever truth comes up and recognize where the ego needs to die uh, so that new can begin. And that's really what we're in. This is very much a death, 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 death week with Mercury in Scorpio, with Pluto going direct in Capricorn. And of course, with Gemini going direct, this is a, this is a massive time with this eclipse energy to just let things die. Do not force, do not push, uh, let things die, whether it's your own ego, uh, whether it is a relationship that you know is just not going to work at your core, uh, whether this is a job, you know, that really isn't for you at your core, whether it's a, you know, living situation, a family, a friendship, what have you, something that, you know, really just needs to die to end, to be released because at your core, it's not serving where you're going. That is what this week is for. Uh, the cleanup crew essentially is coming in after these eclipses to help us really, um, just take, I almost kind of feel like, um, a tower has fallen really, which is very on brand for eclipses. It's very tower esque, very burn the place down so we can have a clean slate. Um, but, uh, this week is the cleanup crew. Essentially the tower has hit whatever needed to be done, seen, looked at, accepted, what have you, uh, with the eclipses, the energy has been removed. And now you uh, are, you essentially are working, are going to be, uh, working with these energies at play this week, um, to assist the cleanup crew in uh, redirecting your path in a more positive way that is for you, uh, truly for you over the next six months. So that's your week, folks. It was very short, sweet to the point. I don't want to sit here and be like, oh gosh, it's a big week because it's really, uh, even though we do have major transits taking place, the energy when I tap into it feels very, um, I don't want to say the same, but still very much eclipse season ish. So if you've ever went through eclipse season, which a lot of you have, you know that there is a crash, bang, boom, and then there's the aftermath. And the aftermath still has that like <gasps> vibe to it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's going to be a good week though. Nonetheless, um, if you're not resisting and you're really just allowing things to be as they are, if you're not forcing, if you're not pushing, if you, if you're not all up in your head, if you're not all up in the past, if you're not all up in the future, but you're just present and reflecting and looking at the lessons and seeing the picture of the puzzle that has been put together and you're examining it and you're like really sitting with it, then you will have clarity and epiphanies. You will have a free, clear mind. You will have clarity and epiphanies, Mercury and Scorpio, uh, and you will have a clear free mind, Gemini retrograde and Scorpio, to really figure out what the hell has gone on while Pluto has been in Capricorn. And especially since Pluto was retrograde in Capricorn, shit was like even harder for a minute. It should be a little bit easier because again, these energies are giving us an opportunity to reflect on the towers in our lives that have fallen. So give yourself some time to do that. Take it easy. I'm not telling you to, um, you know, avoid all of your responsibilities in life. Um, but definitely use this week as an opportunity to take it a little bit easier. Uh, give yourself some time uh, out to meditate, to relax, to reflect. And um, what you seek will come to you. And that is a uh, fact. So uh, if you're struggling at all this week or you're frustrated at all this week, that is you battling you and the only person that can break up the fight between you uh, and yourself is you and yourself. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into some messages for the week this week. Um, I, I think we're going to do 
Let's do modalities this week. Yeah. We're going to do modalities. Okay. Trying to get my vibes right, folks. These damn allergies, boy. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. I love the fall. Love it to pieces. But these allergies are no freaking joke. All right. Interesting. I heard pieces of me. The pieces of me. Uh, car damn. Ca cardinal signs. <laughs> Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. We're going to be using the Energy Oracle deck. The Heartbreak card did come out with financial constraints. Um, I wasn't prepared uh, for it, so I did put it back in the deck, but I just wanted to call it out. If it's meant to come out, it will. Uh, it was the Heartbreak card and the financial constraints, but we're going to take a look at it for my cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. Dang. Yeah. That it's interesting because I think that's what <clears throat> has wanted to come out for you. What wanted to come out for you because that's what's on your mind. That's what's in your energy. And what's funny because what did come out was two angel cards, the solar plexus, uh, angel, uh, the, the solar plexus chakra and the crown chakra specifically. Oh my gosh, my nose. You guys, I'm so sorry. I can't even like, ugh. okay. 37, okay. So 41, four and one, breaking down to a five, seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel. That is a um, uh, crown chakra card. And then 37, three and seven, breaking down to a 10. So you have a 10 and a five, uh, third chakra, Archangel Chemwell, and that's your solar plexus. So, um, I feel like the heartbreak card and the financial constraints card, financial constraints card wanted to come out because these are two things that are on your mind. With the heartbreak energy, I'm getting like a loneliness. And with the financial constraints card, I'm getting like a worry about your money and your finances. And the reason why these two chakras are coming through, because this is you're never lonely when you have that connection to yourself and to spirit. Uh, when you're being guided, when you're being led, you will always be guided and led to the right place. And you have the confidence, you have the capability, you have the inner power, the inner strength to turn any situation outside of yourself, um, turn around any situation outside of yourself that you're not content with. This to me feels like your overall message where spirit is saying like, you got to believe in yourself and if you need to draw strength and inspiration and power from somewhere you need to draw it from us right the crown chakra is the bridge to the cosmos and by us that means you because you are a part of that right you are a part of the divine you have a whole uh soul fam that you're being asked to get connected to uh, this week to kind of, I almost, I was going to say to answer your questions, but I really want to say to help solve your problems because your biggest problem right now is fear and anxiety, ego, death week, right? Number 18, one and eight, breaking down to a nine. A heartbreak card was also a nine, by the way, uh, but with anxiety and in the reverse, which means that if you're looking for peace, you're only going to be able to find it through your crown chakra, through, through crossing the bridge to the cosmos, through getting in touch with your spirit, angel, and uh, your spirit, angels, ancestors, God, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, whoever, whatever you subscribe to, whoever, wh whoever, whatever you have a connection to on the other side, um, to 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 gain the clarity, the knowledge, the wisdom, and most importantly, the empowerment uh, to conquer, to defeat, to tackle any tasks, any things outside of yourself. This is a this these two energies 
are an inner uh, are a balanced energy of masculine and feminine energies at the bottom of the deck you have number 22 uh which is a master number it's a mastery of self by the way right so uh ones are a mastery of awareness so ascension awakening new beginnings all of that uh twos are a mastery of self are you balanced to energy duality within yourself within both polarities if you're not that's when things like anxiety fear worry stress uh, can get in the way because you're not in alignment. You're not in alignment with both parts of yourself, your fire, your flame, the center, uh, um, your Vesta energy, essentially the center of you. Um, and you're not connected with your higher self, your soul, your, your spirit team, right? One energy is, yes, they're both very internal, but the solar plexus is like a Leo energy. It's very masculine. It's very proactive. It's very uh, inner child creative. It's very like, this is who I am, really. It's very authentic. It's very here in the present, uh, in this physical world. And then your crown chakra is very passive, feminine, intuitive. Uh, you know, it's that kind of energy. Both of these parts of you need to be working in tandem. Spirit isn't asking you to be hella passive or hella overactive. It's finding the perfect balance between both. It's being led and guided uh, physically, right? Masculine energy taking action on the information and guidance that you are receiving intuitively. Are you listening to yourself or are you spending your days worrying about things that you feel like you don't have control over, that you don't have the capacity to change, that you don't feel like you could make a difference in is really the energy. There's a feeling of powerlessness that needs to be addressed. You have the power to, to change your reality to create your reality, but yet you've been taking a back seat, Nine of Wands energy, why is that? Why do you not feel conf confident? Why do you not feel capable? It's like you guys know like the wheel is turning, wheel of fortune, like there is a new beginning on the horizon, but it's almost like I'm almost getting the feeling like you want to run away from it, like you want to run in a different direction, which is kind of weird because it's like, what are you really afraid of, right? Uh, maybe you're afraid of your own success. Maybe you're afraid of being so damn good. Maybe you're afraid of being uh, seen, heard, looked at, but there's a lot of waiting and not a lot of doing. Three of Wands energy is an energy of waiting for your ships to come in, seeing what else is out there, planning, strategizing. But as much of a sitting energy as it is, it is also an active energy internally, energetically. And this is what we're talking about here. Three of Wands is Aries energy. It's fire. So it's a masculine energy. It's always going to be about taking action in one way or another. But because it, I just had deja vu, but because it is the three of wands specifically, it is a little bit more of a passive fire card, but it's not an inactive one. There's thinking going on here. There's planning going on here. There's strategizing going on here. There is even a little bit of like daydreaming with the water energy here. What do I really want? What do I really want out of my life? And most importantly, with that solar plexus, do you believe you can make it happen? Because right now it's like you want, you want, you want, but like, how do we get out of the daydreaming state and feel confident enough to take action on what it is that we really want to do? This is what you guys are struggling with this week. And this is what spirit is asking you to look at literally because we have the hangman. Look at how you spend your energy. Look at what you're doing. If you're not seeing the, the rewards and the progress that you're looking for, you're not going to, nothing outside of you will change that or fix that. The issue uh, at this time, oh my God, with the fucking allergies. Sorry, guys. The situation at this time is um, really a lack of planning is what I feel like. Uh, what is this hangman? Okay. I have to be honest. There's a little bit of like delusional energy here and you really got to be honest with yourself about that. I just heard the abundant universe will provide, which is true facts, right? Faith, belief, the universe will provide, but um, 
it's not going to, whatever you want out of life is not going to fall out of the sky. There is an energy of needing to be proactive. Um, Pisces energy is, is a dreaming energy. It is a, very much a, uh, these are my dreams that are kind of up in the realms, but you do need that Virgo aspect, which is how to bring them into reality. And even though this is an Aries card, Virgo and Aries have something in common, strategy. They're strategists, they strategize. And so you need to figure out how you can bring those dreams that you're having, right? Which is nothing more than what you're envisioning, right? Uh, what ships you're envisioning coming in and then utilize that Knight of Wands energy, which is getting up and fearlessly taking action towards it. To me, this just feels like a confidence issue. And because there's a little bit of fear about going after this or making this happen, um, you create delays because you, you, you go into that delusional state and say, well, the universe is going to make it happen. The universe is going to make it happen, but the universe can't make it happen until you show them the way. And that's what's going on here. If you want your anxieties and your fears and your worries to subside, you really got to tap in um, to with that crown chakra energy. So meditation, journaling, writing, just straight up communicating with your guides, with your team uh, to address the internal blockage, which is the fear, which is blocking your solar plexus, which is inhibiting you from um, having the confidence to um, come up with creative ideas and to push forward. And and or I will say to move forward because the idea Knight of Wands is a little pushy uh, energy, um, but I will say Knight of Wands, Knight of Swords are very pushy because it's masculine energy. But it's because they want to get the job done. They want to get to king status. But in order to get to king status, we first have to, we can't skip the queen energy. And the queen energy is that internal receptive at peace. I don't worry. I don't stress. All is well kind of vibe. And that's what needs to be established here within yourself. You need to, essentially, you need to purge your solar plexus of fear-based energies. Uh, because that will then, uh, you need to purge your solar plexus of fear-based energies and partake in activities that that are going to help you boost your confidence. Um, sitting around drinking and shoving your face with junk food all day is going to lower your confidence. Get up, take a walk, go to the gym, uh, meal prep, juice cleanse, uh, like these types of things. And I'm not telling you how to live your life and, and, and whatever, what have you. But if we're speaking to that Virgo energy, which is what needs to counteract this Pisces energy that's here with the hangman that is about daily routine and health and habits are what is um, ha your habits here uh, are, are, is what is creating the anxiety. How are you getting up every day and spending your energy? Are you spending it wisely? Are you spending it on things that make you feel good? Are you spending it on things that make you feel confident or are you spending it on things that fuel the fear? Are you spending it on things that don't that make you feel good in the moment, right? Addiction, escapism. Are you spending it on things that make you feel good in the moment, but they're not long lasting? You're right back to the anxiety. You're right back to the fear. How are you being proactive about your internal environment, right? What are you feeding your mind, body, and spirit, um, literally and figuratively, figuratively? But what are you feeding your mind, body, and spirit that is uh, removing the fear by instilling the confidence and allowing you to have that balance between your masculine and feminine energies to um to um have the daydreamy intuitive guided perspective but also have the guts to get up and follow through on that guidance that's what's needed here yep 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 Yep, yep, yep. All is well and all is good. More fire energy. Lots of Aries here on the table. Uh, but you do have the four of wands with the two of pentacles. Uh, so this is choosing which direction are you going to go? How are you going to establish your daily life? Uh, where are you going to invest, right? Two of pentacles. Where are you going to invest your resources, time, energy, uh, efforts, uh, money, what have you, uh, in order to build this four of wands, which is ultimately what you're looking for. 
for. Stability, security, celebration, something to call your own is what I'm hearing. Something to call your own. Some of you guys can be very focused on uh, independence at this time. Independent living, independent, um, like having your own house, having your own car, um, you know, having your own uh, business, having your own, being the... Um, I just keep hearing having your own, having your own family, uh, having your own, you know, partner in crime, having your own pets, having your own. There's a lot of having your own energy. It's like, I want my own. I want to build this thing. I want this to happen like this. But there's a lot of I want, I want, I want and not enough like uh, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. Ace of Pentacles, uh, I mean, excuse me, Pentacles energy is about like dedication and devotion to something in order to make to to create something to have something uh, tangible something that grows and builds over time it ultimately leads to legacy long term investments that turn into long term uh you know stable experiences in life and that's what i feel like you guys are after and spirit is saying you can have that but you got to like tap in and then once you get the guidance you got to get up and act on it and i feel like the acting on it hasn't really been present because there's been a lot of like sitting on it and thinking on it but it's like now we need to like choose a direction to a pentacles and decide how we're going to start building our four of wands right you can't skip the mastery of self i feel like spirit is really trying to like drive home here you cannot skip the mastery of self it's like um uh, how you gonna win when you ain't right within? Like, that's what this is. Like, if you are like a sitting duck, then your experiences outside of you are gonna be a sitting duck. Instead of spending your precious resources, your precious mental energy, your precious emotional energy, your precious spiritual energy, instead of spending your precious uh, time and energy and resources on worrying and stressing and being fearful and hoping and wishing and praying things change, you need to invest that into the connection with yourself, the relationship you have with yourself, with your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit team, right? Uh, you need to invest it in yourself so that you can get into alignment from within and then begin to take action so that the things outside of you now will mirror the alignment that you have uh, created within yourself. Because the reality is that with the way the laws of the universe work, they're set up, they're guidelines to help you figure this shit out, right? Just like all the all the teachers, uh, you know, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, shit, even the ones, uh, you know, Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, uh, you know, Rosa Parks, like all of these people who have come into the world and saw some sort of injustice, a not great way of being and have taught throughout the ages. There's so many deities we could name, um, but uh, and people who have passed on and so on and so forth for so many prophets, if you will, right? Prophecy is like a thing that's coming up um, as well. Prophecy, legacy, all of these like long-term beneficial energies, which makes sense uh, because we're coming out of the Capricorn era and going into the Aquarius era. And that's all about future forward thinking, a better place to be for all. Um, so it makes sense. But anyways, um, it's just like, like I said, all the teachers that come in to show us a better way. Spirit is trying to get you to understand that there's a better way to go about what it is you're doing. So old ways are not going to work, which means you got to be really proactive about getting your own shit together so that things outside of you can change. And again, this is not a judgment. We all go through these things, but you are feeling a little stuck in your energy, literally trapped within your ideas and uh, your feelings and your thoughts and your worries and your woes and all of these things, you feel trapped in that. And the way out of it is to establish that better connection with yourself, which means doing things for yourself that are better for you so that you can build up that confidence that will diminish the fear that will allow you to start taking small steps and actions on things that you uh, are wanting to do, are wanting to make happen so that you can create that four of wands energy in your life, which again is stability, security, celebration, right? The portal door, if you will, that's how I've been looking at this four of wands, like the portal door uh, from this um, new moon eclipse in Libra. So very on brand, okay, Cardinal Sign.
And so that's what I have for y'all. We're going to move on now to mutable signs. Mm. Okay. Ooh. All right. <clears throat> Mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Woo! Praise the Lord. Things feel good for you guys. First card out, you have financial constraints, and it and it and it is in the reverse. Number 13, one and three, breaking down to a four. Fours are about stability and security uh, and mastery of um, the things in your life that you have put legs on, essentially, right? So if you're building a table and you only have three legs, the project isn't quite done yet, but it, quite done yet. But as soon as you pop on that fourth leg, that's a motherfucking table. And that's stability and that's security. And that is mastery of maintaining the things in which you've created with the energy of three, which is creation, co-creation etc. It is in the reverse, which means you're coming out of financial hardships. So that is a good energy. If you have any cardinal sign placements, Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, I would check that out because this is a card that actually wanted to come out for them, but did not. Uh, and it's because they uh, have some work to do in regards to how they can get out of a place of feeling strained financially, as well as heartbroken, etc., etc. So if you have been, God, dang, if you have been someone who ha I'll show you in a minute, but if you have been someone who has been struggling with that, then the cardinal signs reading is what you're going to want to look at before you can get to this financial constraints energy. Second card out, mutable signs, cornucopia, <laughs> number 11, more master number type of energy here today. Everyone's getting master number vibes. But number 11, cornucopia, that's blessings, that's abundance, like... <laughs> That is very much like, thank you, universe. Like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Like, that's what that energy feels like. Hardships are over. Coming to a close, coming to an end. The drought is almost over. Then you have number 12, one and two, breaking down to a three. So you literally have one two, three, and four here. One, two, three, four. So 1234 on the clock, you could see maybe, or uh, different combinations of ones, twos, threes, and fours. But number 12, uh, one and two, breaking down to a three with the templed path. And then bottom of the deck, you have number 43, four and three, breaking down to a seven, man holding a coin in the re verse. So this man holding a coin in the reverse energy is interesting to me. Um, uh, all right. I'm just going to start spitballing what I'm feeling here. You are coming out of, there's a lot coming through. So take what resonates for you. Okay. <clears throat> you guys are coming out of a phase where there has been a little bit of a drought and for a lot of you guys, I'm feeling there has been a drought in your life because spirit can't bless you when you have people who want to uh, get in on your blessings and they didn't earn them. That's real shit. Like that's that's the biggest message coming through here. Now, there are some other side messages and I'll tell you, but others of you guys, this could be getting out of a relationship or a connection with someone who didn't really love you. Um, damn, that really that hurts to say. Um, that didn't really love you, didn't really 
truly fuck with you. Um, but they did because you had something to offer. You had something that they wanted, whether that was a listening ear every time they brought their drama to your doorstep, whether that was money, they didn't have money. So they were like riding your coattails, like they needed to be supported financially, uh, or you were a good resource to them is really what this feels like to me. It could be a man or a woman. I know we have the man holding a coin here, but this does feel like a connection based on financial exchanges. Uh, or um, relationships of convenience. So friends, family members, people want to be around you because of, you know, the glitz and the glamour and the fun and the games and all what you bring to the table, but not necessarily contribute even in a way that is loving, right? So we shouldn't um, shun people if they're, uh, you know, we love them, they love us, and they're they don't have money, they're broke or whatever, and you always have to pave the way. Do we need to set some boundaries? Yes, uh, but we shouldn't, you know, we we don't we sh we shouldn't put those people down or cut them out of our lives just because they're broke, right? Again, boundaries. That's where boundaries come in. But these kind of people that I'm feeling are people who are really like survivalists who just came into your life to take from you, and I do feel like they took more than money. I do feel like they your energy. They blocked your blessings. Like I'm getting very energy vampire, very out for themselves, very like, it doesn't matter about you. I need my needs met. And that kind of energy does come from like trauma in the past, right? Somewhere along the line, most likely in childhood, they didn't get their needs met by a, a, an important authority figure in their life, a mother, a father, a brother, a cousin, whoever was raising them essentially, whoever was bringing them up in this world, they didn't have uh, that. And so your energy, solid, stable, I'm, I'm seeing a horse. So very free, very open, very loving, very generous. These type of people have been naturally attracted to you coming into your experience, catching this energy, getting a whiff of what you have, uh, and, and, and wanting to be a part of your experience, not out of love and care, but out of what you could do for them. This is ending. You have either cut these people out of your, if, if that is resonant, if any of that is your story, and it doesn't have to be just intimate relationships, again, friendships, family, what have you with the man holding a coin is definitely other people involved with this. But if that is your story, you either a have already cut these people out of your experience and as a result spirit is rewarding you with what is truly meant for you now uh, i heard sacrifices so giving up these certain people uh, cutting them out of your life standing up for yourself these are all sacrifices that you had to make and so now you're getting your blessings your reward from it financial constraints are over you're entering the templed path which is really a solo path of enlightenment of you going on your own journey focusing on your own self sorry um or b that's what you're being asked to do this week okay now for those of you where this doesn't have anything to do with a person, the way that the energy is coming through is that um, your own habits, your own scarcity, your own lack mindset, your own spending habits, your own, uh, the way that you view and see and perceive abundance. So I'm getting like five of pentacles um, that is changing or needs to change. And that's what is going to open the floodgates uh, to this cornucopia energy. It's what's going to take you out of this financial constraints and uh, put you on the path. I keep hearing spirits say, listen to us, listen to us, listen to us. So you guys might be getting uh, your own guidance or guidance from, you know, others, myself, people on YouTube, uh, friends, family, whoever that are telling you like, Hey, if you want to make more money, do this. Or, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, um, invest over here, then, you know, invest over here to me, for those of you guys, it feels like where it isn't about people outside of you. Again, it's been your own perspective on money and abundance. It's been your own, uh, lack and scarcity that's been getting in your way. It's been your own stubbornness and unwillingness to make positive changes and investments in yourself and in your life. And that has been creating restriction for you in one way or another. It's almost like um, for those of you, and, and here's the mixed breed here. It's where for those of you 
where uh, there are those sort of personal habits and things at play and stubbornness going on uh, that happened as a result of people coming into your experience, taking, 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 draining your energy. And it's like you kick all these people out of your life. You lock the door, you deadbolt it, you turn off all the lights, you shut the curtains, nobody's home. But what that has done, if that is your story, then what that has done is as you're shutting out all of these people who are takers, which is the right thing, you've also now shut out and blocked your own blessings uh, because you have went into, I will say like a really intense, a really distorted, a really shadowy uh, hermit energy where it's like, uh, it's not safe out there. Uh, people always take, uh, I can't let anyone in. Well, that in turn would keep your blessings outside as well. Needing to find a happy medium uh, between locking yourself away so that you don't get taken from whilst blocking out things that people could take from you from coming in and uh, learning how to set healthy boundaries with people. And I also want to say learning how to discern like who is really like there for you and down for you and who is really there for you and down for what you have or what you can give or what you can provide, whether it be energetically, sexually, physically, emotionally, materially. There's a lot of like uh, people uh, feeling entitled to your blessings and only want to be in your life to see what blessings you get so they can get in on it. That's energy vampire. That's a leech. That's a bum. Like that is like, get the fuck out of here. So if you're dealing with anyone like this, the advice this week is, um, to get the hell away from them because they are blocking your blessings, but not to get so far away, uh, from them that you then close yourself off to the world and to the blessings that do ultimately want to come in for you. So I feel like I'm going to be honest with you, no matter what side of the fence you're on, if you're on the people side, if you're on the it's me side, or if you're in the middle where it's like it's people and it's me, it doesn't matter where you are on the side of the fence of that. The idea is that you need to be open to abundance this week. You need to have strong boundaries. You need to have strong discipline. You need to have strong restraint. It's almost like you need to redo your whole like give and take vibe. Reevaluate it. Know what you deserve. Yeah. I keep getting drawn to this temple path card. I'm going to I'm going to read this to y'all. I wasn't going to read out the book today, but it just like I don't know why I can't take my eyes off of it. I feel like it wants to tell me something. <laughs> so I'm going to tell it to y'all. Okay. Uh, the Temple Path, Spiritual Purpose and Support. Receiving this card represents your own spiritual evolution. The winding path you are on leads to a blessed temple in a lovely garden, symbolizing the spiritual destiny your soul has in mind for this lifetime. This card upright is here to tell you that, that you're going... Oh, sorry. This card upright is here to tell you that what you're going through now is all a part of your soul's process. You are on a karmic path and heading in the right direction, and the choices you make now are important for your personal growth and life lessons. The light around the temple represents the spirit world. Your family members and friends, angels and guides, all the loving spirit helpers who long to assist you, call upon them and be open to their wisdom and inspiration. This is a wonderful life expansion time. So keep in mind your personal priorities as well as your spiritual connection. Following your higher intentions will help you move your life forward in dramatic ways and connecting with spirit and your higher self will have a wonderful influence on all that you experience. Yeah, that's why I feel like they wanted me to read that because that is the path that cardinal signs, they didn't get this card, but that is also like the balance 
that cardinal signs we're trying to figure out. It's like you this week have reached the templed path and you're like, okay, what do I do with this? And of course, the reading of this card just told you what to do with it as you approach, right? You're like, I get this energy of like bright eyed and bushy tailed, which of course is great because who doesn't want to be the hell up out of this energy, right? Financial constraints with cornucopia, which is abundance, it's nourishment. <laughs> it's what is going to fit. This is like being in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and then reaching this beautiful little majestic temple in a wooded forest that is going to like nourish you and bring you back to life of course who wouldn't want to be there right cardinal signs i feel like are figuring out like they're like just trying to get the map in their hands and figure out how to even like which direction do i even go in how do i get to this temple what the fuck like they haven't even left the dock yet three of wands energy but you have left the dock you have been traversing 40 days 40 nights uh through different terrains and conditions. Uh, and now spirit is telling you all of this can be yours. Uh, but I, I am getting that energy of intention. What did I say? Shadowy hermit energy. Yeah. The knowledge and wisdom does come from within, but you do have to be in this meditative state until spirit tells you uh, to take action. It's kind of what I'm feeling. But I think I, I'm going to be honest with you. You have already been here. Now it is time to come out of here. Yeah, four of swords. Don't you love a good confirmation? Four of swords. You've been in the hermit energy. Enough is enough, truly. That's what I'm feeling. Like you have, I told you, you've already shut the blinds, shut the windows, kicked them out, done the thing. Like you've already done that. And if you haven't, like I said, the advice again is to do that. But I feel like for a lot of you, you've already done it. Four of swords is like, all right, time to get up. You could have went through some pain behind this. It hurts to know that people don't really fuck with you. Like, I agree. Four of Swords comes, af comes after a little bit of heartbreak and pain and sadness in the heart space. Four of Swords is indicative of a rest after a very challenging time, a very painful time. But Four of Swords in the reverse is recovering now. It's time to get up. It's time to make some moves. It's time to come out of this hermit energy. D like, just like the temple path said, don't lose that connection to the divine, but balance it with your practice balance it with practicality, balance it with, okay, I have this divine knowledge and wisdom. I've, I've uh, found the map. I've got to the templed path. Now, how do I merge both of these energies together to make it fucking happen? Capping. You're getting, uh, you're being revitalized this week. Naturally, I feel that does feel like a very internal spiritual thing, but I get this feeling of you physically needing to rise to the, rise to the occasion, uh, which means you do have to open the curtains. You do have to get out of bed. I'm gonna show it to you in the upright so that you can see. You do have to pull the cover off. You do have to get out of bed. You do have to go shake some hands. You do have to go have some conversations. You do have to go show your face. You do have to get back out there. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, mutable signs. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Look at this. Two fours again. So now you have the energy of three fours here. So stability, security, all of that is very, very important to you. You're getting uh, back on your feet. You are afraid though. Seven of swords, five of swords. Let me show you. So you have the four of swords and the four of cups. So this is you hiding in the house uh, in your hermit energy, right? Hermit goes in to transmute uh, knowledge into wisdom, going within soul searching to gain the information, to transmute it into the wisdom that they're going to use as they continue down their path to the star, which is wish fulfillment, which we could just say is cornucopia in, that ca in this case. Now, this is you currently, at least anyways, four of swords with the four of cups, dreaming, uh, hoping, uh, wishing, looking at the option over here, but still kind of feeling some type of way, right? Three of swords, three of cups, uh, over the pain, over the hurt, over the deception, over the lies, over the betrayal, over the people that wanted to take, right? Essentially, still feeling a little hurt, still feeling a little down. And again, even if this isn't people and this was your own behaviors and patterns, those stemmed from feeling like you've always gotten the short end of the stick in one way or another, in friend groups, in relationships, in the family dynamic, uh, within work, within a job, always feeling uh, overlooked, not good enough, like you could never win or get ahead. And that's because you were always made for more. Temple path is purpose, energy, something you uh, can't, something bigger that you have come here to do 
which is why you were overlooked in all these small, petty situations. Do you give a fuck if a snake likes you or not? No, you will hope the snake don't like you so that it goes the other direction so that it doesn't bite you. You know this concept because look at this, five of swords. I'm, is that a snake energy here? I feel like there was a snake on one of these cards. Maybe it's not this sword card. Maybe that is a snake. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. Anyways, five of swords, seven of swords. This is why you've been in hiding because you, like I said, you have been hurt with that four of uh, swords and that four of cups here. And that's why, that's why you're hesitating to fully go back out into the world because you're like, you're ready for war. You're ready for battle. Five of swords. Who is going to come take from me? Seven of swords. Seven of swords is a snake, is a stealer, is a thief. Deception, betrayal, trickery, tomfoolery, motherfucker that wants to come leave you with your crusty five or, or leave you with two and, and run off with the rest of the five. Five of swords is protecting the five swords that she has. Seven of swords wants to take the five and leave you with two. You're like, I am onto this. Hell no. Fuck people. Fuck the world. This is how you're feeling, which is why, because this is how you're feeling, right? Where you're at in life is not a place. It's a feeling. Where you are at in life is not a place, it's a feeling. And the way that you feel is derived from your thoughts, from past thoughts and worries and stresses and what you are worrying and stressing about your future to be, right? Which is why spirit is like, come back to center, come back to the present. The past is no more and the future will not happen because you have the knowledge and wisdom, the know-how to smell out and sniff these seven of swords people and make sure they don't even come nowhere near your treasure, your cornucopia, your money money, your finances, et cetera, et cetera, which is what I was saying earlier with discernment. Discernment is going to be your friend. When bad things happen to us, when we take losses, when we get hurt, when we get put down, the objective is not to stay down or not to become so fearful that we're going to get put down or hurt or kicked down again so that we don't get up. The objective is that we take what we have learned from this experience and we apply it to the present moment so that the future does not become history uh, or excuse me, so that the future doesn't become the past and therefore history repeats itself. Those who do not know history, repeat it. But you are already up on game by the people that have come into your experience. I don't want to say not to be so trusting, but don't be so distrusting either. I just had deja vu again. Don't be so distrusting either. You need that balance. That is where discernment comes in. Don't be overly trusting. Don't be naive and foolish. Don't feel like you can just give so willy-nilly and freely because you have a big heart and you, you love to be a giver. Give and love and be open and, and, ha and all that, but with discernment on where to place boundaries. Who in your life has a tendency to take, set a boundary, right? Y'all have had a lot of takers around you and that has made you feel very self-protective, uh, you know, very protective of you, very protective of your things. It has kind of hardened your heart a little bit, made you not want to give. And when you, when it puts, when you are in that state of imbalance, over giving or under giving, it puts you in a place to not be open to receive any blessings at all. And this is what spirit is wanting you to know. While you may have been the victim of thievery in one way or another, uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually or physically by people you love or who have claimed to love you or what the hell ever, um, spirit wants to bless you. And you need to be trusting in the universe to be able to bless you, which means you got to unharden your heart and get off your defenses. And yeah, you might not need to uh, be trusting to everyone in your life. In fact, I'm encouraging you to not be trusting of anyone who has come into your life and do this. In fact, be most distrusting with them and cut them out completely. That's really my advice. Or, you know, if for whatever reason you can't come cut them out completely because they're a boss or a family member or whatever, set those strong boundaries, stand up for yourself, speak up for yourself, but don't close yourself off. Don't guard yourself off. Don't hide yourself away. You are a gift that needs to be seen. You are a gift that spirit wants to give to. You need to recognize that and understand where you have been closed off and overly guarded and protective of your energy so much so that it has been creating blockages in your life and not allowing the things that you do want to come in. Look at this. Six of wands. 
with the Queen of Cups in the verse, what did I say? Harden your heart. What is the key to victory and success? What is the key to embrace, to follow, to take on the templed path, to be fully in yourself and your authenticity, to, to not lose your love, to not harden your heart, to not be bitter and jaded and hung up on the past, but instead to open your heart, to love freely and deeply. This is Pisces energy. You see the Pisces emblem uh, on her necklace. This is a greater understanding of all that has come to pass and forgive not holding on to grudges, not holding on to vengeance, not holding on to uh, the hurt and the pain that people have come to just, it, it hurts to be used. It hurts to be taken advantage of. It hurts to be overlooked, not seen, not understood. It hurts. But when you let that hurt fester, you are only then hurting yourself. And that is what spirit is drawing your attention to. Stop hurting yourself because other people have hurt you instead be exactly who you naturally are loving giving uh, a beautiful precious gem uh with a big heart that has just been severely mistreated and misunderstood and go claim your victory for all the sacrifices that you've had to take because you are a warrior but a warriors have open hearts and you need to open your heart without being afraid that you're just going to be stabbed in it again um, because you've learned your lessons and so long as you you've integrated that wisdom, you are safe and free uh, to move about the cabin and go receive your blessings is what this comes down to. All right. So get out of your own way, get people out of your way and follow the templed path to your cornucopia and abundance is going to flow freely to you. But again, you got to show up. You got to show up. Okay. Fix signs. This one is for you. Okay. Big signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Um, the mastery for you this week is not to let your emotions get the best of you. Do not allow your emotions to get the best of you is kind of the energy that I'm feeling with this. If I'm being totally honest with you, um, number 33 door to romance. It is in the reverse. We'll talk about this in a second door to romance in the reverse. You have yin yang. I believe cardinal signs also got this energy. Number 22. Uh, master number, which is a mastery of self. And then we have anxiety, which I also believe Cardinal got this energy. Number 18, one and eight, breaking down to a nine. Bottom of the deck, you have a num another two. So I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, journey, but it is in the reverse. So twos are very significant. And again, like I was telling Cardinal Signs, it is a mastery of the self. Threes are a mastery of creation and manifestation. Um, so you have two, two, three, three, two, 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 three, three, and then nine, which is an energy of completion. Some of you guys have been working through um, some heavy emotional stuff for a while and spirit has been nudging you down a specific path with this journey card. That's really going to help you uh, manifest, create the thing that you really want to create in your life door to romance yes of course this could be about manifesting the right relationships and so on and so forth but it's really fifth house energy it's really like um uh establishing manifesting creating your heart's desires so while that could be the perfect partner the perfect relationship the perfect friends the perfect family perfect to you right perfect in general doesn't exist but there are things that are perfect to you and um while I will say that energy is here in the reverse, 
because how am I trying to say this? You can't get into creation mode until you have mastered yourself and whatever parts of yourself that are blocking or getting in the way of you manifesting your heart's desires. There is fear here. There is anxiety. And dare I say that there is even a little bit of resistance to where it is uh, that you are being guided to go. There's resistance to the path in which you're being guided to go. It is a path that your heart is calling you on, but you're resisting your heart. Why are you resisting your heart? Why are you resisting your heart, where your heart is leading you? And instead, uh, which I do feel is positive, right? Where your heart is leading you is positive, uh, but instead giving into anxiety and fear and worry. I'm seeing temperance. So that is an imbalance of your own energy. It is a lack of trust. It is a lack of faith, but it's also having a really difficult time getting over something or someone or some energy that is kind of blocking your movement. So I'm going to go ahead and read journey card, journey card to you because it is speaking to me. Um, so number two, journey in the reverse. You may desire to move or just get away for a while, but the reverse of this card could indicate a delay or even a cancellation. Something could be standing in your way or perhaps lines of communication may get crossed. Don't let the potential change ups don't let the potential changes upset you. Refocus your energy and be flexible enough to alter your schedule or destination as needed. Remember, you can always create new adventures, even in your present location or situation. So again, your emotions. I, I can't, I can't unfeel what I'm feeling. Like I just feel like a flood of emotional energy coming in. And what this really feels like to me, fixed signs, is that um, whatever perceived blockages, delays, denials, rejections, redirections have truly been to get you to become aware of this energy of fear and anxiety and worry and stress that is holding you back. You, you, I want to say that, ah, I hate, I, this is tough guys. I hate to say it like this, but the more you react negatively to these blockages, to these changes, to these shifts, to these delays, to these unpleasant, unplanned for experiences in your life, the more you're going to bring that back in. It's almost like the universe is like they, uh, Taurus still hasn't learned. Here's another lesson. Leo still hasn't learned. Here's another punch in the face. Scorpio still hasn't learned. Here's another kick in the yaya. Uh, Aquarius still hasn't learned. Here's another punch in the head. Like it, it seems like you're trying to turn a corner. That's why I say you can't, sorry, you guys, there's a lot that wants to come in for you. Um, cause I feel a lot of frustration and I'm like getting annoyed. So this is like how you're feeling. Cause it's like, it's making you doubt what is meant to be for you. And that's not what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be alerting you to your own self-limiting beliefs and your bad behaviors, <laughs> essentially. It's supposed to be alerting you to your attitude, to the energy that you put out into the world. You can't traverse this beautiful uh, path of, uh, this beautiful path of creating your heart's desires until you address the energy within yourself that is creating uh, issues for you. Yin yang is about masculine and feminine energy and them doing a beautiful dance. In this case, the feminine energy wants to trust the actions of the masculine, but there's something about you that is so distrusting and so, um, worried and fearful that if you follow your heart and you create and you do, that it's not going to be successful. And that's ultimately what's stopping your movement. But you're taking it as, oh, well, then this isn't meant to be. I got to go over here and do this only to be stopped at the gate. Or, oh, this isn't working. So now I got to go over here and do this only to be stopped at the gate. Because it's not what you're doing outside of you. It's what you're not looking at within you, which is why every corner you turn, you get hit with a two piece and a biscuit. 
If you want to stop getting your fucking head knocked off by the universe, then you need to get your head out of your ass and look at what is going on here. Because I keep, this is why you guys are so frustrated and I can feel it. It's boiling in my chest, in my stomach, in my throat. Like, I feel like I need to like jump out of my skin. Like, I can feel the frustration. But you, if you... The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If you keep doing something and doing something and doing something else and doing something else and doing something else and doing something else outside of you that is against what your heart wants you to do out of fear and worry, then you are going to keep getting things if you keep acting and moving out of fear and worry, you're going to keep running into situations and experiences that are not sustainable. The bad things, air quotes, the bad things that keep happening to you are a result of the way that you feel about them. So spirit is wanting you to look at your reaction. How are you reacting when things don't go to plan? Like a brat? Like, do you throw a tantrum? Do you put a hole in a wall? Do you give up? Do you become defeated? Do you start doubting and questioning your choices and everything that you've ever done up until this point? Because that's what it feels like. And spirit is like looking at you like, why are you fighting yourself like this? I feel like, why are you fighting yourself like this? Because I'm feeling the frustration. But what I'm seeing is that like, it doesn't have to be this way, but you're refusing to look at you. That could be an ego thing. We can look at it because I am feeling a little bit of ego here. I'm going to be honest. This might not be the nicest, easiest message, but it's the one that's going to get you out of this fucking hamster wheel that you're that you're on. So take it for what it is or turn it off now and keep struggling. <laughs> like that's where it is. But it's like it's like I feel someone like basically what I'm saying is this. There's a kid who is tired and cranky and hungry and throwing a tantrum and the parent, which essentially in this case is the universe and you are the kid throwing the tantrum has the kid by the collar and the kid is like flailing, trying to get out, screaming, crying, doing hella crazy shit. And the whole room of people is silent because it's like, what are you doing that for? Why are you acting like that? Oh, you're hungry. Oh, you're thirsty. You don't think there's a better way that we can like go about this. Oh, you're tired. Oh, you don't think that there's a better way to like go about this. The reason for the kid energy, I feel, is because kids are learning, right? You are in a state right now, since you have twos and threes, which the one which tells me that there has been already some initiation, one energy, something has already been initiated uh, in your life. You're just learning how to master yourself th so that you can create your heart's desires. Um, you are starting something new, which is why you're being shown as the kid, because spirit is trying to show you a better way, right? The teachings of uh, Jesus are to show to essentially uh and i study all deities by the way like all of them like i don't <laughs> metaphysics uh, astrology philosophy like mythology like everyone is involved in that but specifically the teacher jesus the teachings of him was that let me go through uh, adversity so that I could show you guys a better way to get through it. And that's the energy I feel like that's coming through here for you guys is the teachings of Jesus. Let me show you a better way. Let me show you how to get to greener pastures. You want to keep doing it your way. You're going to keep struggling and we have free will. So we can keep doing things our way. But if somebody told you there was a better way, wouldn't you want to do it? Wouldn't you want to go the better way? If, if you were walking through the thorn bushes and somebody was like, you know, there's like a, a path where you don't have to walk through the thorns. You want to like maybe try over here and your ego is like, no, I don't want to do it my way. Like that's the energy. And it's like, and even if you aren't like outwardly throwing a tantrum, you are definitely outwardly acting out of fear and anxiety and making choices based on that. Whether that's not doing anything at all or making, like I said, making specific choices about um, things through that space. There is no fear in the heart. The heart is just a space for love.
and your heart is full of fear, which is why this heart is in a cage. And the key out is to drop the fear and to go a different way. Damn, that was like a whole message. Uh, let's just see. Judgment and the Six of Cups. Judgment is spirit. Six of Cups is telling you something about your emotional behavior. There's a pattern here of emotional behavior, Scorpio energy, Six of Cups, that is not serving you well. You are not following your heart. You are following the fears and the bad emotional behavior patterns that you have accumulated over the years from the past. And with the Two of Pentacles, it's time to make a choice to go in a different direction, to try something new. But again, this isn't about what you're doing outside of you. This is about your behavior. It's about your attitude. How are you acting when shit is not going your way? How do you act when you feel like things aren't working out? What type of self defeating self-effacing energy do you get in what type of energy do you project on other people when you're in a bad way that is what is blocking you and that is what you're being asked to deal with because that is what will set you free tower energy with the palace of wands destruction to the way that you uh, manage your own energy palace of wands it's nothing but the palace of energy so destruction a breakdown a change an epiphany about the way that you handle and manage your own self your own energy because you're showing up as the king of wands which is an asshole and that will set you free from this purgatory that you're in ten of wands with the fool and I'm not calling you an asshole. In fact, I love you. And if calling you an asshole is what's going to get you out of this hole that you have dug your ass in, then I then accept it as that. But King of Wands energy in the reverse is someone who acts out of fear, who is kind of like my way or the highway, who 110% operates out of ego. And if it doesn't go my way, I'm going to burn the whole fucking place down. And does it really have to be like that? King of Wands is someone who doesn't feel empowered, who doesn't feel in control. And therefore, when things don't go the way that they think they should, they act nasty, mean, mood swings, snappy, angry. King of Wands in the reverse isn't someone who does anything about it either. They just let it fester and try again and let it fester and try again and let it fester and try again until they reach a breaking point, 10 of wands, where they're completely fucking burnt out. And spirit says you can break out of this and get into the energy of the fool if you're willing to abandon the way that you've been approaching life. And situations that don't go your way, you can have a brand new beginning that is very successful, ace of wands, six of wands, but you got to put down your old ways. Six of cups, king of wands. Whatever or whoever you feel is blocking you outside of you, you are only continuously, perpetually, in, perpetu in perpetuity being blocked because of your own attitude and your own energy. And again, it is from a place of fear because like I said, King of Wands is mo feels most safe when he has control or when he feels like he has control over a situation. Fire is a tricky energy to master because you can use it to create beautiful things or you can use it to burn down beautiful things. And right now you're burning down beautiful things because you're not because you're having a difficult time mastering energy. And I feel like you're having a difficult time mastering this this fire energy because you're so used to either A, getting things your way, and this is not how it's working right now, so you feel some type of way about it, or B, you don't really know how to follow your heart because you're not in tune with it. And so resolving this would be requiring you to at, sit down with your heart and start interviewing it and asking it some questions so that you can listen to it. But before you do that, you need to address your attitude and your energy towards uh, the fluctuating circumstances outside of you and recognize where your behavior is actually what is creating the very thing that you are resisting. What we resist persists. And if you hate change and influx and fear and uncertainty, that's what you're going to get in your life. 
And that's why spirit is, said, is saying to you, uh, fixed signs, you need to look in the mirror. Fixed sign, it's interesting. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, fixed energy is very fixed energy. It's being set in your ways. It's you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's you think you're fucking right about everything. And if anyone tries to tell you anything or tries to show you a new way, like you might listen and love it in the moment, but then you go right back to your old ways and behaviors. It's you that needs to change. It's you that needs to change. It's you that needs to change. I say that with love. A lot of people might hate me for this message, but it is you and your attitude and the behaviors and the set in your ways and the unwillingness to try new things and the resistance to go a different, to have a different approach. Your resistance to really trusting where spirit, what door spirit is trying to lead you in and with judgment and the door to romance in the reverse, it is a path where you are allowed to follow your heart and explore all of the creativity that is within it. And that's where spirit is trying to lead you and you keep burning down the opportunity because you refuse to be flexible. You want to be fixed <laughs> instead of being flexible when flexibility is called for. So the next time something doesn't go according to plan or doesn't go right for you, watch how you react to it and your attitude and your energy towards it and know that your attitude and energy towards it is will what is is what will either uh, persist that, prolong that suffering or end it, diminish it altogether and allow it for a new door uh, to open up to you. Fix signs, I want to say this. Your intentions are in the right place. You want to do good in the world. You want to succeed. You want to create. You want to follow your heart. You want to. But the way in which you're going about it is not a way that is going to be conducive to following your heart. So you need to get out of your ego sit in the energy of love heart right because where there because love cancels out ego sit with your heart so that you can diminish the ego this is the week for it and that will allow this door to open for you and you won't feel so restricted from what you want to create from your heart space i don't want to ram you a new one or rip you a new one <laughs> but if nothing changes, nothing changes. And if you keep yourself on this fixed controlling, things aren't going my way, temper tantrum cycle, rinse and repeat, then you're not going to get to where you want to be. And then you're just going to ultimately give up because that's what this 10 of wands is like giving in, giving up and giving in. So you have two options, six of wands or 10 of wands, <laughs> defeat, burnt out, burden or success, victory, and power. And you don't get success, victory, and power by being a king of wands in the reverse. So it's up to you, but that's what I have for you. I hope you guys have a lovely week. Uh, oh, Hannah, right? No, uh, no one gets left behind. And if I need to speak like that so you can get it, then it is what it is. But I love you guys. And I do hope that you figure this out because I don't want to see you kind of stuck in this cycle. It's very frustrating. I can feel the frustration, uh, but you do have to break it and it is up to you um, and you'll do it. I believe in you. But that's what I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me a today. If you need anything in the meantime, between time, you know where to find me. But other than that, I will talk to you soon. Take care.